Welcome back everybody, this is EpiTube Immunobiology, the principles of the innate and adaptive immunity. This is chapter 1.3 on chemokines, cytokines, and clonal expansion. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button as we follow along because this is the third lecture of a series of lectures that will continue to cover these things in greater detail. So let's begin. Oh, let's begin with the chemokines and cytokines. Well, pathogens that escape the physical and chemical barriers are met by cells and molecules that mount an immediate innate immune response. Make sure you know that this is the innate immune response that is um, triggered first upon pathogen invasion. Now macrophages that recognize common pathogen associated molecular patterns, and this is a very very key terminology, its acronym, uh, acronym is PAMPs, P-A-M-P's, pathogen associated molecular patterns on the surface of the bacteria using pathogen recognition receptors or PIRs. Okay, so what is what, what this uh, PAMPs are essentially are these molecular signatures that only exist on bacteria. Okay, or bacteria or viruses or essentially anything that's foreign to the body. Okay, and is recognized uh, by these pathogen recognition receptor. Okay, that makes sense, right? It's a, it's a, it's a receptor that recognizes pathogens. Okay, and these are uh, typically on cells like, for example, macrophages that are uh, key to the innate immune responses, macrophages and dendritic cells, for example. So pathogen recognition receptors recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns, and it's a way for our bodies to tell the difference between ourselves and also a foreign invasion. And what these macrophages do when they actually do recognize a PAMP, okay, they engulf the bacterium and degrade it internally. So we talked about that earlier. This would be the phagocytosis. And of course, they would secrete proteins called cytokines and chemokines, and this is what we are adding on today. So for example, if this is the bacterium here, and it has these molecular markers here on the edge that are the PAMPs, okay? These are the PAMPs. These cells, for example, might be able to detect these PAMPs, okay? It tells the cell that this is uh, foreign to the body. And then, of course, the, the, the macrophage, for example, will then engulf it through phagocytosis, and of course degrade it into individual pieces and then when it does so it actually sends out these signals these chemokines and these cytokines um, to the rest of the cells or the body and what these cytokines and chemokines do they're, they're often actually um, uh, mistaken for each other but let's, let's go through the, the terminology and definition for them so cytokines are a general name for any protein that is secreted by cells and, affect, and affects the behavior of nearby cells that express cytokine receptors. So essentially, if there's another cell nearby or even itself, these chemokines and cytokines can then affect the cells nearby, including itself, that has the receptors to tell them to mount an innate uh, immune response or an inflammatory response. Chemokines, however, they're secreted proteins that act as a chemoattractant. This is the key word. They're the chemoattractants uh, to attract neutrophils and monocytes out of the bloodstream and into the infected tissue. Okay, so essentially they, they act as a signal to tell other neutrophils and monocytes in the bloodstream or nearby to come here because here we have an infection. So what that looks like, for example, is uh, we have, um, it actually leads to inflammation. So cytokines and chemokines released by activated macrophages initiate the process known as inflammation. So let's go through that right here. So you see here the cytokines and chemokines that are released and these are the, for example, neutrophils or eosinophils nearby in the bloodstream. And these cytokines and chemokines, for example, the chemokines will actually, uh, I'm sorry, the cytokines and chemokines that actually open up these, um, the endothelial walls of the bloodstream you see here, here, and here. They make it so it's easier for these neutrophils and uh, eosinophils to actually um, pass through and they start to squeeze through these blood barriers. And they also, they know to come here because these chemokines are chemoattractant. They tell them to come to this area because there is an infection. So this, for example, is like a flag. Come here to come to come uh, help clear the infection. And then, of course, they start to come through and more. And eventually, this area, this entire area here, would be essentially called inflamed because there's so many neutrophils, uh, natural killer cells, eosinophils, and macrophages and dendritic cells here going on. And essentially, this is what we call inflammation. So the word inflammation comes from the Latin words, I apologize, I don't know how to read these, calor, dolor, rubor, and tumor. Okay, um, essentially what they mean is heat, pain, redness, 
and swelling. Okay, and so this may sound very, very familiar to that. If you get infected in any area, you uh, that area gets really hot. They get really sensitive to to pressure, and they, essentially it's pain. It gets really red, and it's just swell. Okay, and if you even cut it open, or it has a cut open, um, some pus might come out, and the pus will essentially be like clear liquid, and it's really essentially full of these uh, white blood cells and neutrophils and, bed, and macrophages and so on. And so that's what inflammation is, and essentially that's what's really happening inside or underneath your skin when you have an uh, infection. So let's talk about these pathogen recognition receptors. Okay, uh, These pathogen-associated molecular patterns, okay, PAMPs, are the molecular signatures that are present on many microorganisms, but not on the body cells. Okay, So again, this is a way to tell the difference between um, us and, of course, uh, pathogens. So pathogens, uh, sorry, PAMPs serve as signals to the immune system for foreign invasion. Okay, uh, the PIRs recognize the PAMPs, and such moieties include the, the most common ones. We have mannose-rich oligosaccharides. Okay, my apologies, it's actually spelled wrong here. Get rid of the A. Uh, we also have um, their peptidoglycans, their lipopolysaccharides, and the CPG DNA. So essentially, these are very, very common um, PAMPs. Okay, pathogen associated molecular patterns okay, that exist on bacteria and so on but does not exist not in a uh, human okay and essentially this tells us um, these are uh, these tells our bodies that these cells that have these uh, particular signatures molecular signatures that they are not human okay so therefore uh, degrade them by um, phagocytosis uh, so PAMPs are conserved in evolution, and so therefore they're great targets for recognition. For example, all these here, um, all the all the types of bacteria and so on may actually have these um, conserved throughout evolution. So it serves as a great recognition because therefore, if for example, if they start to want to um, mutate certain LPS patterns or peptidoglycans and so on, uh, we might not be able to recognize them anymore. But in in evolution, these bacteria actually happen to keep these and conserve these because there's actually a biological um, adaptation for them. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the best recognitions, uh, sorry, the best uh, PAMPs to recognize are always those that are conserved throughout evolution. Um, so therefore, pattern recognition receptors, my, uh, my apologies, these are pathogen, okay, pathogen recognition receptors, uh, allow the innate immune systems to uh, distinguish self, okay, the body, from non-self. Okay, this is how really the innate and adaptive immunity are linked together. Um, mature dendritic cells um, also co-express these uh, co-stimulatory molecules, okay. They provide the signal that act together with antigen to stimulate the T lymphocytes, or okay, the T cells, to proliferate and differentiate into its final function, fully functional form, okay. Uh, the B cells also need uh, they actually require help from activated activated helper T cells for optimal antibody responses. I'll go through all these together in more detail with you. And activation of the naive T cells T cells are therefore an essential first stage in virtually all adaptive immune systems. So what we talked about earlier in inflammation was really dendritic cells, macrophages, neutrophils, eosinophils, and so on. They're, those are the innate immune systems responses. In this case, the dendritic cells after uh, having engulfed the pathogen, what it does is actually would degrade it and it migrates over to the lymphatic vessels because these lymph nodes actually um, are uh, secreting chemokines so their nodes to come here. Okay, Once it actually uh, degrades it, it actually expresses pieces of it on the cellular surface as you can see here. These little pieces of it that are expressed are then exposed to these T cells in the lymph nodes and these T cells can therefore survey these peptides on the edges because each of these T cells have a different T cell receptor that may bind to different uh, antigens, okay, or different epitopes, you would call them. And they would survey them, see if they can bind properly. Some of them don't, some of them do. And for example, let's say this one does bind properly and it gives a proper signal to this T cell to then differentiate from a naive T cell to an effector T cell. It therefore then goes through something called clonal expansion, okay. Clonal expansion is essentially the proliferation and differentiation of this recept, uh, this protein because so no this CT cell because it has a receptor that can bind specifically to these uh, antigens that are expressed. 
and therefore when you actually go to clonal expansion, all of these will express the same receptor, okay, they can bind to the same antigen, and therefore once these continue to clonally expand, say 2, 2, 2, 2, and they continue to go on, then you have essentially a whole army of T, -recept T cell receptors that can detect the pathogen and of course then amount an adaptive immune response. This is called an adaptive immune response because it had to actually adapt to the fact that there's infection and it had to clonally, uh, clonal ex go through clonal expansion to then mount a T cell army of um, any immune response, uh, sorry, adaptive immune responses. So what clonal expansion is essentially is, you see here clonal expansion is a central principle of adaptive immunity. Okay, we have clonal selection and deletion, and I'll show you exactly how that works here. So we have the hematopoietic stem cell. It then differentiates, like for, let's say for example these are T cells. Okay, you can also use these for B cells, for example. But let's say T cells, and each one of them have a different T cell receptor. Okay, let's just say this is a T cell receptor, and this is a T cell. Okay, each one of them have a different T cell, and these are naive T cells. And let's say that this pathogen is a purple. Um, or object here, and the self antigens, for example, uh, you know things that exist in our own body that we don't want to attack, are the ones in the green. Okay, so say for example, this T cell has a T cell receptor that can bind to the pathogen. Okay, and this would actually be shown on a and a dendritic cell on the surface of a dendritic cell. So it binds to this pathogen, and what happens is that uh, oh my apologies, the ones that uh, bind to self are told to die. Okay. Because they bind to self, we don't want to kill ourselves. If they happen to bind ourselves, then they're essentially told to die so that they don't kill us. Whereas if it binds to pathogen, what happens is that these these T cells are then signaled to survive, okay, and they go through clonal expansion, and then each one of these express the same T cell receptor so that then like, they can all recognize this virus in the future and moving forward. Okay, so therefore the diversity of the lymphocyte receptors, whether it be B cell receptors or T cell receptors represents the repertoire of the immune system. Okay? And we'll continue to go through the details of this in the future, exactly how this happens and the signaling, uh, but as for now, this will be serving as the principles of the uh, activation of the adaptive immune system. All right, so clonal expansion has four different principles. Let's go through them here. So each lymphocyte bears a single type of receptor with a unique specificity. So again, um, each lymphocyte that expresses different types um, uh, I mean, so the T cells that have all together express a lot of different types of T cell receptors, but then each one can only express one single type of receptor, okay, with one unique specificity. In addition, there's an interaction between a foreign molecule and a lymphocyte receptor capable of binding that molecule with high affinity leads to lymphocytic activation. So when it binds to a foreign molecule, this lymphocyte is then told to uh, actually continue to survive, okay, and uh, go through clonal expansion. So essentially that's what we call lymphocytic activation. The third rule here is that the differentiated effector cell, okay, so after it's been activated and it survives uh, from an activated lymphocyte, uh, will bear receptors of identical specificity, okay, to those of the parental cell from which that lymphocyte was derived. So again, uh, I showed you earlier when it clonally expands, all those receptors all are exactly the same from the same progeny, okay? I mean, so from the same parental cell. And lastly, lymphocytes bearing receptors specific for ubiquitous cell molecules uh, are deleted at an early stage, okay? This is called clonal deletion on the previous side, it's on a pre previous slide, okay? And the lymphocytic cell or lymphoid cell development are therefore absent from the repertoire of mature lymphocytes. Essentially, when they bind to self, they're called, uh, they're told to die, and that's called clonal deletion because they bound to self. We don't want to kill ourselves. Okay, so we're just gonna put here um, clonal deletion. Okay, that's the that's the right term for this. In summary, for this chat uh, for this session, macrophages and dendritic cells express pathogen recognition receptors on the side of the surface to detect pathogen-associated molecular patterns of foreign pathogens. And upon detection of these PAMPs, okay, uh, macrophages and dendritic cells release cytokines and chemokines to induce inflammation. Okay, the, um, and of course, inflammation would be the, to, then to recruit uh, more of the innate immune responses to the area. Uh, and then antigen-presenting cells, which would be the macrophages and dendritic cells, 
that have ingested foreign pathogens express pieces of the foreign pathogen on the cell surface. Okay, they then migrate to the lymph nodes and activate T cells that react to the expressed uh, foreign pathogens for differentiation and proliferation. That's called clonal expression, uh, expansion. Uh, and this essentially is the link, okay, it's going to put link to uh, adaptive. Okay. See how uh, the uh, antigen presenting cells are the innate immune responses and then now brings it to the lymph nodes to then activate the adaptive immune response. And it's going to put immune response as an IS, okay. And the T cells that react to self antigens are negatively selected and do not perform clonal expansion, but they perform. I'm just going to put here clonal deletion. Okay, let's put brackets here. Those are the brackets. All right. So thank you for listening in on chapter 1.3. Um, this time, the next time we'll be on chapter 1.4, the B cells and T cell receptors. Okay, I draw in little diagrams here. Uh, to exactly explain how the T cells and um, what the T cells and B cell receptors look like, and exactly how they're activated, and so on. So of course, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow along. And of course, like these videos if you if, if you're enjoying them. And uh, let me know if there's any uh, comments. Uh, I mean, let me know any comments you have on these lectures, and also any questions you have, and I'll answer them below. I'll see you next time.